Support the Amigos podcast and keep the Amiga goodness flowing for just a dollar a month. Visit our page at patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we're going to talk about Dream World. We're going to talk about it? We're going to talk about it. I don't know what that means. It's it's kind of like talking. But it, pantomiming? Mm-hmm. It's, it'll, it's, it's sort of this thing I've got planned where we do this puppet mime bar show. I like it. Yeah. But before we get into the, all the Dreamweb awesomeness, uh, we got some feedback to read. Oh boy, week. oh so, lord, oh good god now. Oh, we got some feedback from our Sim Life episode last week. Lob Sterminator says... Uh, <laughs> that name never gets old. <laughs> I've, I never enjoyed this uh, too much as a game, but it could have been a fun teaching tool in schools. Uh, he says, in the last years of his elementary school, they had an Amiga in their classroom, but it was mostly used for deluxe paint and playing games that people brought from home from recess. And that's what should be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and he said, later in middle school, we had proper computer class with high-tech monochrome IBM AT computers. Can you imagine having an Amiga at your school? No. You would never get anything done. <laughs> it's like, all right, stunt car racer all around. When I was in elementary school, for most of my elementary school, I think that we didn't have... Like, there were old Apple IIs, but no one used them. And then when I was in fifth grade, we got some AT. What were those PS... Yeah, the IBM PS2, the all-in-one. Oh, yeah. We got, oh, we got those. The lame ones. Yeah, yeah. they were kind of yeah. lame. Um, but, yeah, what do you think about SimLife as a teaching tool? Well, I don't know how accurate it is in the realm of actual life. You know, now, Will, Will is a, uh, a, a genius. He may have... It may be straight up nature certified but i don't know uh it's still neat i mean it's it's more there's more of a teaching tool there than playing like dream web at school True. for example <laughs> which i don't you, recommend teach you some other things in teach you how to be fired as a teacher <laughs> yeah but that would do but yeah i mean i liked i liked sim i liked that more than you as we discussed as a teaching tool it's certainly something that you could give a kid who is advanced not a kid but you know more like a teenager who could as I say, it's just something to mess around with. It's just kind of see what happens. And it does, I guess it sort of gives you an accurate portrayal of how you have to have a certain amount of heat here, earth or water. Soil moisture. Yeah, you're right, mm -hmm. yeah. Mutants, you got to have some of those. <laughs> a couple of radioactive spots <laughs> here and there. Fly, <laughs> flying bear. <laughs> Not unlike our state, really. Yeah. Um, Deckard Threepwood writes in. Whoa, okay. And he says, another great podcast. I listen to you guys every week and would love to contribute more and provide feedback and comments. Where is the base, best place to do that? We get this question a lot, believe it or not. We do? People wonder where, because in this day and age, you know, there are so many places that you can reach us. You know, you can reach us at Amigos at AmigosPodcast.com. We have all the social media stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've got, you know, the YouTube and all that. I think probably the best place, if you want to leave us a comment where the most people will see it, is probably going to be YouTube. That's probably... If, that, if you're not on Discord. Yeah, if you're not on Discord. Which, um, and you should be on Discord. But if you're not... Uh, uh, YouTube is the way to go. Now we had, we still have forums and stuff, but I don't. We check don't have them as forums much. anymore. Oh, do we, are they gone? We closed okay, the forums well, down. That was probably a good move because yeah. they didn't get much action. Um, uh, yeah, YouTube comments. I like, I like that. It's direct. People can even tell, put the you know, time, the time stamp, stamp on there. Yeah, that's it, a, that's that's, that's a, one that's of your a, little favorite. Gimmicks. I love doing that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he also says, um, where are the links kept, like the iGame 2.0 beta you discussed in this episode? So that's another question we get sometimes. Where are all the show notes for Amigos? They're Aaron? always always on our Google Plus page. Now, I know you're thinking, you're thinking, Google Plus, sweet Lord. And you're right. That much said, I can access Google Plus from work, and it's easier for me to access than Facebook with a lot less baloney. Now, mm -hmm. that much said... Uh, I, I try to uh, to catch Facebook up, and I think not just me. I think some other people try to catch it up with uh, uh, with Google Plus, which we've got to be the only people that do it this way, stupidly. But I can't. It's harder for me because I can't do it from work, and I don't think you can do it from work no. either. So uh, that's why we use Google Plus. And it, Google Plus is a, it's actually Google dropped the ball, in my opinion, because it's a good it's a good social network. Yeah, yeah. It's just that. Uh, 
you know, it, and it's a we've got a pretty good amount of people in there. I, I lost count. Uh, I can't remember how many we've got, but it was hundreds. It was like three hundred people or mm -hmm. four hundred people, something like that. Yeah, so, I've actually got our page pulled up here. It, it does not give right us there, a, right, right there in the corner. Oh yeah, three hundred thirty-three members. Look at that. Yeah, crazy or wild. So uh, yeah, links. I all in fact, we literally read right off the page that I've posted up there and, and vote occasionally, and, and other people I add stuff to mm -hmm. it too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you, Deckard, but, for uh, w for writing in and, and asking those important questions. Yeah, and do contribute. Good Lord, we need all the help we can get. Yeah. And I will try. I will. I swear to you, I will try to keep uh, the Facebook more current than you I You know do. what I do? Um, there is a website called Buffer.com. Uh -huh. Like Michael Buffer? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can actually use that. You can set up an account to post to both Facebook and Google Plus at the same time, even if you're locked out of Facebook at work. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's what I use. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah, There's a little, little tip for everybody out there that's managing multiple social media accounts. You know, we're... Uh, I apologize to the listening faithful. I mean, as, as a social media mogul, I suck. I, I mean, Boat's much better. I'm shocked. Like don't ARG, we have no Twitter. Or we don't do anything. I sent out a Twitter tweet the other day on air about ARG. I was just like, man, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't understand. I've never fully grasped Twitter. I've never been a big fan. Facebook's sort of the same thing. And everyone's got like... They got uh, like Instagrams and Instagrams and all this crap. I just, I, it's just too much, man. It's too much to keep track of for me. I thought Instagram was a thing that only kids used, but it's not. It's like my my wife, she's she gets she's on there all the time with her buddies. It's uh -huh. like a thing. Instagram. Like one of our buddies is doing some Instagram stuff for us, right? Oh, that's right. I forgot about Chris Folds. Yeah. He does the. Our, we have an Instagram page. You know, and so, so uh, and and he. I get on there occasionally, but Instagram's another thing. I'm so old. I just don't. I just don't go there. You know? <laughs> right. Right. You know, my, Teresa told me that no one's on. None of the kids are on Facebook. They're all on Instagram. The I think. Kids I, today. I, I think that, that, that whenever you hear about things on the news, there are all these studies that say, yeah, kids are leaving Facebook in droves and going to Instagram. And I think a lot of it is just because Facebook, I think, monitors like how old you are to be able to do certain things. Instagram doesn't care. Oh yeah. It's whatever you want. Also, the continual. Uh, Security issues. I don't think kids are concerned about security issues. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, there you go just... then. Anyway, we'll we'll try better next time. Um, and finally, we have. Man, do you feel like I'm too low right now? I feel giant size beside you, and you're this, and you're and you you because you're back further than what me. What do you think about this? What if That's I just creepy. raise it up a little bit? Wow, look at you. Now we're on evil. You're like King Dong. We're now. on even footing now. Well, I don't know. The party's over. Listen, you need to have a throne or something, and I'll sit over here on this thing. You're in the throne right well, now. Yeah, that was nice of you. I appreciate that. He says, hello, Boat and Aaron. As a relatively new listener, I felt the need to drop you fellas a line to offer my thanks for such an informative and delightfully entertaining podcast. The chemistry we both have, the location, and subject matter make for a wonderfully unique angle on an already formulaic structure that many retro podcasters fall into. There isn't much of a scene here in New Zealand, yeah. so as an expatriate of the UK, used to all the computer fairs and clubs, uh, feeling frustrated, frustrating, frustratingly isolated in one's rather archaic interests here in New Zealand, your show connects like-minded nerds like me on a global scale. Thank you, and keep up the fine efforts. Simon Rose. So, thank Simon. you, Simon. Simon is our newest Patreon supporter. He's in the house. He's in the chat the right now as we speak. Um, and uh, he says that he will uh, donate some additional money to the show if you watch RoboCop. You're quite famous for not having watched RoboCop. You, you don't have to donate additional money. I will I will endeavor in the next calendar week to sit down and watch <laughs> RoboCop. I, it's not that I don't want to watch it. It's not like Saw, where like I would have to get paid right, to watch that. Right. RoboCop, I'll watch. I'll try. Yeah. Um, and here is something that would really interest you, Aaron. He says, also, the episode of Black Mirror you were talking about a while back, he built the artificial man Dude. featured in that episode. No kidding. Isn't that crazy? Holy moly. Small moly. world. He, wow. So we got a guy. How that, come everyone that listens to us is so much more awesome yeah. than we are? I mean, he's basically the showrunner for Black Mirror. He runs man. The, yeah, so I, I think my uh, admiration for Black Mirror uh, is well known. I am a Twilight Zone guy from way back, big anthology guy, and very. I think Black Mirror is one of the few shows I've seen ever that's in the same ballpark. Creative geniuses, and to think that someone listens to me that also worked in the show is b mind blowing and and 
I don't know what to say about yeah. it. But that's awesome, man. Yeah, We're yeah. glad to have you on board, man. Absolutely. And, and we do have people in New Zealand. Yeah, the Huck. The Huck is there doing some. Uh, he's got a massive collection. I mean, you guys should. I wonder how New Zealand is geographically. Where you could like. Yeah, I don't know if things were like within a drive, a day's drive, or, or how it's laid out. But uh, but yeah, you guys should definitely get together at some point and uh, share the Amiga love. That's awesome, though. Yeah, and uh, uh, keep keep doing the good work <laughs> because that, I love that. I believe. Uh, the episode we were talking about was this. I think it was the first episode of the second season. I think mm. does that sound? You don't know, do you? Mm. You haven't watched. That's not your bag, is it? The, the Black Mirror. It's not my favorite thing in the world. It's. Uh, I've well, only watched one episode, so maybe I'd like the other episodes. You, it's. But. It's. You're not into violence or weirdness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I can Both of those that. things frighten. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was great for me. Ring. Thank you. I'm glad to have you on board. You ready to dive into this week's Amiga news? Yeah. Aaron? Yeah. Let's I think so. It. Let me get the gamble tron ready to go here. Um. So now. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Uh, this I'm going to talk about this Dreamcatcher article here on uh, the Adams Family. Actually, it's the follow-up to the Adams Family. It's the, it's the uh, Pugsley mm. again. Now, Bo, I know you're a big Adams fan, uh, Adams Family fan. I am. Did you see how it worked as in a one word, an Adams yeah. fan. Did you play the uh, Pugsley game? I did. Oh, uh, you did. So you have some insight. Now I read this article, uh, and. Uh, uh, what what can you tell me about that game? Well, um, and it's of course this is a video, and we also have the uh, we also have the script right. linked to it as well. Right, um, Pugsley Scavenger Hunt is uh, the sequel to the Adams Family. It was the next game that came out after yeah, after this. Um, I was way 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 excited to play this game. I, I thought it was going to be great. Um, you know, I love the Adams Family. I was ready for more of the same. It is not more of the same. Um, the game is is very pretty. Um, it is, uh, it's based upon the same sort of concept where you are walking through the Adams Family Mansion, going into doors and beating levels. Right. But they've, they've totally destroyed what is the most important um, mechanic in a platforming game. The jumping mechanic? The jumping mechanic. Yeah. They took and what is essentially the best non-Mario jumping mechanic in any platform I've ever played and threw it out the window. What Pugsley does is he sort of like stumblingly lurches forward. Uh, he doesn't, and, and it, it's just, it makes an already difficult game just impossible and not fun at all. So even though it's very pretty to look at, also Pugsley just looks like, he, he looks like, he doesn't look anything like he does in the movie or in the TV show. He looks like a small fester. Yeah, he looks just kind of like, uh, what, who's our that, favorite uh, caveman? Um, oh no, not that guy. <laughs> Sig, we Kid keep, Vicious? Yeah. Yeah, he, he's he's along the same lines he as looks that. Mad. Just a, a very unappetizing um, or unappealing. It's funny because Pugsley is usually this like blase, Looking, right, he's like bored. Exactly, basically. exactly. So I guess they had to toot him up a little bit for the '90s. But um, you know, you can try this one out. I would not recommend purchasing it. I think it's one best for the old emulator. Okay, fair enough. So now you know we got some. We got a couple good contributions this week that I wasn't involved in, which is always great because I miss stuff. So Andy Davis. Our, our friend Andy Davis has an article out here. Did you have a look at this? Eight bit symphony concert. Eight bit symphony uh, concert. Apparently, this is. I think this is a. Uh, uh, it's a touring uh, symphony oh, okay. in the UK that is playing eight bit music. So this is sort of like a video games live here in the states, uh, except they they only concentrate on eight bit tunes. So is it? Do you think it? I, I didn't read the article. I don't know if it is. It says eighty players. So I guess this is like a real symphony. Eight bit. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, no, we have not. We do not have that here. Well, uh, I don't know if that would work here. Do you? I don't. Think I don't it, think it would. I, I don't think it would because I think the eight bit era lasted much longer in the UK. It, than I it think you're here. right, and I don't think people over here, since the PC took over earlier, it and it had craps. <laughs> no yeah. one's gonna. Cl no one's clamoring for a PC sound concert. Right. Right. And I don't think the people in general, if you ask them, like, what are some of your favorite computer game songs, they wouldn't immediately bust out Turk and Two. Or the ir uh, you know the unforgettable theme of Jet Set Willy. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's I almost didn't pay attention to that comment, but man, yeah, that we can get past that one. Uh, God, that's the haunts my dreams, man. <laughs> Remember when we played another ZX game, Death Chase? Mm -hmm. Remember the noise that that made? 
<laughs> the ZX so far, I like the both games, but man, that noise yeah. is no, that's no good. And man. I think on the, the original Spectrum, I don't think that the speaker was inside the thing. And so you couldn't turn it off unless the game let you turn it off. Yeah, yeah. It's bad time. So along, keeping in, in, in tune here with the uh, sound uh, situ situation, we've got uh, the uh, Pixels at Dawn has, has entered Reformation 3, which is that this is a, a Kickstarter uh, by Matt Gray, who is going to, who's remaking old C64 tunes, mm. which is cool. Uh, I think he's, I think it's already been backed, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 28,000 or 26,000, so uh, it's going down. He composed the, he composed music for The Last Ninja 2 and Driller, which I really, you know, Driller? Last Ninja 2 is one of those games that we we played it a zillion years ago. Yeah, it was like but one of the first episodes I wanted we videoed. To, I, it's one of those games that I didn't think was the best game, but I really like the concept mm -hmm. of it, you know. But it's kind of cool that the guy, for old school guy, is going to go back, and uh, and he's this is and he's already been funded. So I guess this is the third uh, the third album he's done of that stuff. So good for him. So have you ever played Driller before? Driller. Yeah. The game I, I read it here. I don't. I'm, I, I played Mr. Driller. Yeah. But I, I, but don't I know think if that's I a different Driller. game. Yeah. It's probably a C64 game, yeah. so that's not our bag. No. So get this. Our our good buddies at the Guru Meditation. We love those guys. Uh, ha had an interesting video that went up. It actually had a couple of videos that went up this week. We'll talk about this one first. Uh, they had a a, a fellow uh, named um, Manuel Jesus, who was, the, if you remember him from the oh, one other right. video they did of the... Uh, of the vampire, he came in to demonstrate the vampire version for the Amiga 500 uh, rendition of this particular item. Now, this fascinated me. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about this. this is interesting. Uh, this is not the formal uh, uh, demonstration that he did last time. This is a sort of an off the cuff where they just try some stuff on the 500. Is that Manuel right there? That's Manuel oh, right man. there. Manuel is great. Yeah, he is. And uh, he plays. Uh, they play CD32 games on the <laughs> Amiga 500. They play. AGA games uh, on the Amiga 500. He plays Doom on it. Okay, it's very impressive. They've got the compact flash. They've got HDMI out. You know all the bells and whistles that you that you've come to expect from the Vampire. And it's a, it's a very good presentation and it performs very well. Uh, but what interested me and and I really enjoyed the video. So there's that. But what was really interesting is the comment section below the video. This, I mean, I know we've mentioned this before, but this is the mother of all hot button issues on the Amiga. Forget about Kavanaugh. No, this, this hot button. This is the this hot one is, issue, and there, yeah. I mean, and I'm not sure there's a right or wrong answer, but people are super duper passionate, and at people, some people were straight up appalled that they were that they would play Doom or they did not. They absolutely hate the Vampire. I mean, they absolutely hate it and they cannot abide it they will not allow it uh, uh to to exist in their universe and the arguments and the discussions underneath them are quite fascinating now, i've seen some of this stuff on the on the facebook page and I, to be honest with you i i, I don't really have a spot in the argument because we've talked this before at first i couldn't wait to get one and i thought about it you know blah 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 i mean as a piece of kit that goes into your Amiga 500 that lets you uh do this incredible stuff if that's your bag, you're in. You know, if you if you want to keep your Amiga 500 a proper Amiga 500, then it's not your bag. So I mean, and I don't have a problem with anybody's stance on it because I can understand both sides. Trust me. But man, these people are passionate and they're angry. Some of them are. Well, YouTube comments are always the 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 cream of you know civility and. Well, niceness, this isn't so. your normal stuff. These are people that have a. They're not. These aren't like you're a XXX whatever. These are people that have a, an argument. They have a stance. They they are very articulate. It hasn't broken down into a complete debacle as it did on Facebook <laughs> uh, when I stopped looking at it. But I mean, if you want to see some good old fashioned uh, arguing on the internet, well, I mean, because you know it's hard to find. These this is, I know you make light of this stuff, but I, I actually, do. I find it fascinating, I'll, and I'll, because it's a polarizing, it's a polarizing. Uh, uh, um, um, thing. Well, it's only vampire. polarizing if you want it to be. No. I mean, like, if you don't want to use the vampire, then don't. Well, you're right. But people want their opinions to be... God knows stamped. they do. God you know? knows they do. And, Everybody and, deserves and, the right and to be heard. It's, uh, it's, it, I think it's interesting. I don't... I don't. I mean, I know you're you, being... Uh, you just love to about it, but I, I think it's interesting to to read their opinions, and, and, and they a lot of people make some very valid points uh, about it. But that much said... If you want to see an Amiga 500 
with a small board, and I mean, yay big. That's right? it right there. That's right? it right there on the screen. If you're if you're watching the video, if you want to see something that's a few inch, I mean, it's about the same size as a Raspberry Pi. Uh, give your Amiga 500 the ability to have uh, IDE, HDMI. Uh, a bunch of extra memory and the ability to run AGA and run uh, external. He runs an external uh, CD-ROM off of mm -hmm. it. Now let me ask you this: Last week we talked about. I think it was the ten minute Amiga cast was, or no, it wasn't. It was it was our our guy, the Huck, with the, the bridge board thing, right? right. And um, what is the size comparison between a bridge board and the Vampire? Well, actually, Huck has a video this week of installing a bridge board, so that's definitely the one to watch. Uh, that much said. Uh, um, it's the bridge boards. The ones I'm familiar with were, well, actually, it was about it was the at once card I had was very similarly. Okay, same. I was just curious. In you fact, know, it, it even hooked up the same way as I recall. The vampire is. I, I I think this is the first time I've ever actually seen one, and it's so much smaller than I thought. Well, it this was. is this is a. I this don't is, think is this. this is, I think one? this is the first time they've unleashed this one. The version four. Again, I haven't okay. kept up with the vampire like I did. Uh, but it's interesting, and again, they're showing they're playing Doom, and people they're like, "Wow, I never thought I'd see the day where you could play Doom on an Amiga," and it's it looks like Doom on the Amiga. That much said, people the purists are like, "Listen, you're not playing Doom on the Amiga; you're playing Doom on a something else." Which you know that and there's and that's a that's where the argument is basically. It's I think it's interesting. I know you don't, but I think it is. So if you want to watch this video, I strongly recommend watching it uh, just to. Just to get a grasp as to what is happening with the modern technology that's getting put into this stuff. You know, it's funny. On the one hand, I think that it would be awesome, you know, if I had a 500. Let's say we had a, the Our House 500, and we, we slapped the vampire yeah. in it, and yeah. I started to play with it. Every time I've ever tried to use a real Amiga... The you know the first thing that stopped us from having fun is PAL. The second thing that's oftentimes stopped me from having a lot of fun with the Amiga is using the Amiga mouse because it's still the ball mouse. It doesn't respond right. very well. I mean, you can get so, you can get things. We're just too cheap to buy. Right. Yeah. But then at that point, you're replacing the mouse with something else. You're yeah. taking another piece of the Amiga away. You know, what point are you just sitting here with this plastic box in front of you? That's you know. Well, see you that right there. That's a comment. I'm putting it in. I'm you, writing you can, it in. The can, world needs to know. And I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna badmouth you for. I'll badmouth you for other things. You can badmouth me all you want. But I, I, I suggest that you have any interest in this. And we have some Discord people that actually have a vampire, and they really like it. This uh, looks exactly like the music library I used to work at at Ohio University with it, the records stapled up on the oh, wall. Oh yeah. Well, stuff. there you go. It must not be a must be a trend. So anyway, that, I thought that was interesting. So uh, go check that out when you get a chance. And. Uh, well, I'll get to that in a second. So, speaking of the Huck, yes, tricking out the Amiga 2500 Part 6 bridge board. Huck oh. goes to work. Uh, I talked to Huck uh, just briefly this week. I, I really like Huck's stuff. And uh, uh, he's back at it. Now, see, that is a massive board. Yeah. Right there, but that is, that's designed to fit in those in the Zorro slots or whatever. I just can't imagine that there would be a bridge board that would give you full PC compatibility that would be any smaller than a PC board. Oh, yeah. The At Once card I had was quite a bit smaller. But it was crap, right? What? I d no, I don't agree with that. <laughs> it wasn't crap. What did you, let me ask you, did your PC, could you put a board in that play, and do Amiga stuff no, on it? Okay. No. Uh, even, I'm not saying the Amiga's there crap. Was a, there was a uh, program, I think it was called Cross DOS. I think it was, and, and you could, it was a software based PC, and you could write discs and stuff with it. Uh, the the bridge board I had was uh, was not that big. I uh, like I said I believe it's been a long time since I put it in. I think I had my one thousand and it plugged in the sixty eight thousand slot and then you put your chip in the top of it. But it had a two eighty six processor on it. I believe it did CGA graphics. Wow. Uh, and it uh, uh, and not, it was it was the size of the vampire or like not that much yeah, bigger. Yeah, it was okay. you know it was in the ballpark. And so it, it was wasn't not like, that big. It wasn't like a modern day graphics card where you're no, slotting it in no, the no, width no, of no, the machine. No, 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 okay. it was it was much smaller. Now I don't I don't think it was as robust as what as what the Hux put. Sure, in. but I mean you could run you could run stuff. Well, and, you would most I used it mostly for file stuff, mm -hmm. like for a lot of stuff for pictures and stuff. Which that back in the day when that was some meant something. That you could show pictures on the Amiga, edit them there, and then put them back. Mm -hmm. I would do stuff like that. So, do you think that that's what people did? They they go into DPaint and they'd create a file that could be read by the PC, and they would pop it over to the board and export out through a disk or something. You know, I mean, you weren't playing like games on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, and really, I didn't want to play CGA games at the time. Well, who? Nobody ever you know, really so, wanted well, to I mean, play CGA no, I mean, there games. Are, no, I'm not going to brag on the CGA. There's some stuff there. It's been a long time since I fooled with it. I'm, I know some people love that stuff, but. It was a good little unit, but uh, that Gary goes to work and, and on this. This is the continuing 
saga of his 2500 which it, it, i've enjoyed yeah it's like what said, a Gary, series gary's what a series. gary's a whiz with this stuff um so let's talk about it Bo, you you actually highlighted this uh before we started uh dreamcatch has an article here he's already and he mentions that he's looked over the worst games on the amiga so he, now it's time to look at the longest <laughs> games on the amiga now uh, I believe it goes just goes by straight up YouTube uh, run times right, and playthroughs, right, like which is pretty, long pretty clever. And, and, and uh, uh, did you look down through here to see what, what the the longest game on the list was? Well, we're going down it right now, all the way down to number one. Yeah. Dune two. I remember, I remember when we did. <laughs> I was like, man, you're not going to be very happy with what number two is. Yeah. Well, I mean. It's a great game. I'm not. Isn't this the longest worst game? No, it's Amiga? just the longest. Oh, Lemmings is on that. there. Okay. Good lord, I man. misunderstood. Yes, clearly. So, uh, of course, it's it's great. Dream, another thing Dream Picture will do is some these cool like statistical things. Mm -hmm. and I like that. So that was I thought that was good. Man, this, that's bringing me back. Remember the. By the way, keep scrolling days down there. Too? Amigos Cafe. We oh, need to start one of those. Yeah. <laughs> so now. <laughs> I know this has been around for a while, but you know the old saying: "If I haven't seen it, it's new to me." Mm -hmm. uh, you know the uh, folks over at Amiga Alive. We've mentioned them, I think, at least once. They have a uh, Amiga Alive web directory. Are you familiar with this thing, Boat? No. Uh, it's a big, long uh, compilation of all the different Amiga-related websites. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's like an down old. Through uh, there, and you can see they've got. And they've it's like got an a, old Yahoo directory from the late nineties. Sort 90s. of, yeah. And you can, but I mean, it's real handy. Yeah, it's real handy. Like some are for programming, and some are for news. There's podcasts. There's you know whatever. Are we on there? We're on there. We're on there. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it's uh, stuff to help you do stuff, which is nice. You know, with, you know, with doing desk stuff or or disk stuff mm -hmm. or whatever. So. It's it's this is this is when you bookmark right away correct and yeah. which is exactly what I did so I I I, I stuck that one in so now Boat I'm gonna let you cover this one since you posted it uh, this article about Ben Daglish yeah so uh, this is just uh you know the the retro world has sort of been in mourning uh, the past actually I guess this just happened it was the news broke yesterday that Ben Daglish has uh, passed away uh, I posted a screenshot of uh, his wife. Uh, uh, she she put a letter out saying that uh, Ben died very suddenly on Monday morning. Um, he was a very active musician in the C sixty four scene and also in the Amiga scene too. But I think he's most well known for uh, the Last Ninja and also the music in seven twenty on the C sixty four. Oh, okay. Well, the, the, is, as I recall, the music on seven twenty and the C sixty four is sort of a legendary yeah. uh, uh, tune. Right. Uh, in fact, I remember Flack. Uh, covered it in NTSC and PAL, if I'm not mistaken. I think it could be Skater Die. It's one of the two. But uh, well, that's I'm sorry to hear that. I'm I'll be honest, with you, it was not familiar with the fella. But uh, that that I'm sorry for all the CCC4 fans. Mm -hmm. Um, so one last little item here. Uh, it's not that little, is it? Um, straight off Indie Retro News. I lost all this everywhere. Uh, they have updated Amiga OS uh, to 3.1.4. And best workbench or best WB to uh, one. Hmm. So uh, this is it is what it is. It's been updated. Uh, I didn't go through all this stuff because you're, what you're going to need to do is it's going to it's it's time for a new ROM. Uh, you're going to have to uh, you don't have to, but they've uh, they've modernized some stuff. I mean, it's a good thing. Uh, and I believe that uh, the the Guru Boys did a live stream where they oh. fooled around with this. Oh boy, my so, mouse is out of control. Sorry so if you are, if you want to uh, check those guys out, they actually, and uh, those fellows are a lot more technically skilled than we are, Boat. Yeah, to, so uh, it looks like 30 euros to buy the uh, the update. Is that, is that, is that just the update? Is that, is that just to burn yourself? I believe, as far as yeah, I can tell, yeah. it says 20, direct, direct buy, download available. That's not bad. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in fact, one of these days, I mean, give, depending on what it does, I, I might give it a whirl. I heard it does a lot of stuff that's been needing to be done for a while. So, uh, sounds like a plan. But hey, it's good to see that stuff still getting updated. Yeah. Kind of neat. Yeah. So, that's all I got, Boat. You got anything else that we missed? Yeah, oh, let's probably... talk a little bit about site news this week. All uh, right, go we ahead. Got, uh, this week, you and the Brent uh, covered... The most beloved of all British computers, the ZX Spectrum. This is the second go round with ARG, and uh, this this time you really do the system well in terms of talking about the history. And actually, uh, we mostly talked about the Timex Sinclair. To be right. honest with well, you. Well, I mean, you go in, you, you talk about Clive, you talk about all the ads, Micromen, and all listen, that stuff. And, listen, I I I love 
I love the C5, the uh, the little, little car. car bike. Mm-hmm. That cl- and uh, he's an interesting fellow. Oh yeah, he really is. Yeah. And the and uh, you know I since we'd already covered this, me and you covered this, uh, I believe one it was of the like early thirteen episodes, or yeah. something. I wanted to do a little something on the Timex Sinclair since a lot of people don't even know anything about it. And I didn't know anything about it until I got into looking. Uh, you know, because you know, America had a Sinclair. I love your. Uh, there he is, right there on the C5, waving yeah. at you. Yeah, some good production, right? Oh there, yeah, you know? <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> they can't see that on the video because we're covering it up. <laughs> well, that's okay. You're not missing that much, but uh, uh, the <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I I like the fact that. Uh, do you remember the commercial where he's jumping over all the other computers mm-hmm. in the park? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's, I think they did that in Micro Man too. They showed a picture. You know, I think they showed that ad in the in the in the film. Micro Man, I learned a lot. It's a great I mean, movie, and I assume it's at least the majority of it's what even if it's not, even if it's total lies like the imitation game. I don't care. I yeah. want that to be the truth. But we we had a good time. You know, Brent had not had any really ZX Spectrum experience, and so. Uh, and I'll have to say the game. It's I remember the game he picked from me and you laughing at the name. How I was like, what is this? But, but what a game! I couldn't believe how impressive it was as a game. You know, I mean, did, did you actually look at the game? It's, it's oh yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, I, I I never heard of it. And you know, when I was watching, I was watching the show, and uh, it's graphically, it's very impressive. Yeah, I mean, it was. Yeah, it was. And then I I, I had a, a an American effort at Jet Set Willy with. Results that you would imagine. It's just <laughs> we just don't get it, us Yanks. No, it's just we it's, just don't it's, get it. It was Amiga levels of hard. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God, it was hard. Well, and like like Brent said, you know, you've got to be of a certain mindset. You can't walk in thinking it's like Mario. It's it's a very methodical, slow. It's very it, it, you know. it's very Atari like yeah. in a lot of ways, yeah. and the old Atari eight bits. Which I believe it, it actually was on the Atari 8 bit. There was a Coco version of this boat. Really? Right? Yeah. The one, the was dragon. it a clone? Was it was it a like, dragon version. Was that no, Millie, no, a girl? no. Oh. And it was sort of different, mm-hmm. you know. So I'm going to look into that clearly. But yeah, it was interesting. So uh, this week, uh, just to, uh, by the when this airs, this will be just a few days away, we're going to be doing arcade games of the 70s. I cannot wait. So it's going to be a, a different sort of show. Uh, with a different sort of vibe, and Brent has got has been doing a little project and it, it done some very impressive little models that are uh, I can't wait for everybody to see. It. Brent is I gotta give him credit to give the devil his due. He's no good, folks, but he occasionally you know he gets something right, and he did he did a good one on these, so it'll be fun. That's it, man. That's okay. all we got. Let's jump in, Aaron. Let's enter the dream. Enter the dream. So. <laughs> is there was there anybody whose nickname was the Dream in in wrestling? Dusty Rhodes. Oh, he was the they, American Dream. But they call right? him the Dream. Did the they? Dream. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, Did and, they call Cody Rose Dream Junior? Nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah, American Nightmare. <laughs> That's not true. Yeah, he's in to be a world champion right now. But there you go. So <clears throat> this is an unusual title. Now I'm going to preface this article, and I've done this many times, and I'm going to do it again. Um, last week we got this when the committee. Uh, all hail the committee. And when they picked this game, I was like, okay, yeah, I think I've played this. I had not played this. I had played Weird Dreams. Mm. Weird Dreams is nothing like this. Is it like Weird Science? No, well, it's weirder. Mm. Much weirder. So, uh, this was my first ever go around with this. Mm-hmm. And I've probably made the mistake in the past. So, I, I, if you ever heard me go, yeah, oh yeah, Dreamweb, I had no idea. Wrong, wrong, totally wrong. A bad memory. So, Dreamweb came out, and, and I looked at the AGA version, by the way. Uh, it came out in 94, uh, and was developed by some guys called Creative Reality. Mm-hmm. Good name. Uh, published by Empire. Uh, one player game, and the fellow that did a lot of the work on it was named uh, Neil Dodwell. And we'll get back to him in a little while. Uh, this is a, uh, it's an overhead point-and-click yeah, adventure it's a, game. It's a top-down um, point-and-click adventure game. Now, I have not played as many point-and-click adventure games as you. Uh, I don't know if I've ever played one that had this perspective that I can think of. Can you name some that I may have played? No, because I don't think I've played any point-and-click adventure so this, games from this perspective. We can, we can deduce then, considering you have a, a vast knowledge of this field, that this is an unusual um, viewpoint yes. for a game. Yes. Okay. Good, because I didn't think I'd seen any either. So in this game, uh, you play a, ga- a guy called Ryan. Uh, Ryan is uh, uh, has all these issues. 
Now, I guess we should premise this whole look at this game by mentioning the, uh, the this game shipped with a little book. Mm -hmm. Now, did you actually look through this book at all? No, I read a synopsis. Of I, the book. I, I flipped through some of it. It's all handwritten. Now, I think it's called Diary of a Mad Man. But the mad is got it's got a parentheses with a question mark, so it makes you think: Is he really mad? At I all? think what well, that was an Aussie album as well. If I'm not mistaken, mm. could be wrong. So it's all handwritten, and it'll t it'll talk about a, a, a given day. For example, he might say, "I'm not. I haven't felt well today." Um, only lucid for a little while, and here's what I can remember about what I did. Here's what's going on. And so, uh, this this novel apparently is pretty vital to at least having a general idea of uh, of this guy's mentality going into the game. Uh, the game starts off with with Ryan in bed with his girlfriend uh, Eden mm -hmm. uh, in her apartment. Now, the uh, when the game boots up, there's a scene um, of this. Uh, Weird light with little squirrels of light going around it, and these like monk looking guys, and they're talking, and they these guys sort of set up the game, and the premise of the game is uh, there's a dream web that sort of keeps everyone's dreams in line basically, and uh, there are always normal people out in the world. There are always seven of them that sort of keep this dream web in check to a certain degree. Some are good, some are evil, mm -hmm. but something's happened. And all seven of the people that are keepers of their their part of the dream web have are evil. They've been corrupted, and so they need their they need their guy to go deal with these bad guys. And so guess who their guy is? It's you, Ryan, the guy. And so the the uh, the monks do some uh, some gimmick, mm -hmm. some hand gestures. Yep. A blue ball flies out of the dream web. Mm -hmm. It flies around and it shows up I believe in the microwave uh, of of your character shoots out and then whacks him right you know and then he wakes up and he's talking to these guys and like yeah you need to go kill the first guy uh, uh, you know it basically reveals itself to be a hitman style game that's right and so you you are tasked with killing the seven uh, keepers of the dream web that are that have gotten evil mm -hmm. and if you don't do this the world's screwed right you know, so because when you when you go to sleep, that's when they jack. It's Freddy jack Freddy Krueger situation. Well, I, I think it's more world cataclysmic. It's on a larger scale. Yeah, cataclysmic than that. So when you start the game, you wake up and you and you're it again. It shows a down an over the top view of of this bedroom. You're in the bed with a girl, and then uh, off to the side, to the left, is a large like torso portrait of of Ryan. Right, and he's. In a brown leather jacket. I think he has a purple shirt. Mm -hmm. I believe he's got on blue jeans. Yeah. He's Looks like a freaking, what are those, Joss Whedon guys? He does. Yeah. Like one of the, one of the guys, one of the brown coats. Brown coats, <clears throat> yeah. So, um, and then you get up and you start the game. You know, it doesn't give you a lot of, I mean, you know, okay, I've got to go kill this guy. He's the number one evil guy. He's the weakest guy, right? And so, that's basically all you get. And so, you are then tasked with trying to figure out what's going on. Now I don't know how long you're an experienced player. Uh, how did you uh, how did you take it this first part? What how did you go about starting the game? Um, well, because mine would be much more silly. Than when you would. play these games, uh, when you played a lot of these games, your first instinct is to just take everything. Right. So you're picking up stuff because you don't know when you don't know if you're going to be able to be get back into this room and be screwed and have to restart. So I immediately pick up everything in the room. I amass about 16 or 17 mugs yeah. in my there's, inventory. There's garbage. Yeah. There's, there's, uh, uh, there's, you know, magazines are laying around. I'm Vogue, looking at all this stuff. Vogue. Yeah, Vogue. Um, so, you know, you got all this stuff, and then you notice your inventory is limited. You get, like, three pages of inventory with, like, eight slots I believe we have page. 30 total slots, okay. I think. And I think some of those are permanently taken up by your clothing. Oh, okay, yeah. right, right. And so, anyway, um, I leave the room... And I think that I pick up everything, and I go to the elevator, and it says, you get the feeling you've forgotten yes. something. Yes, yes, I got that too. And uh, and so for the next half hour, I try. I play the fun game of what have I forgotten. I feel less <laughs> dopey now. That's good. That's yeah. good. And so finally, you know, I think the thing that they make you get before you leave is the key, which is in the microwave. Incorrect. What's the thing they make you get Your before wallet. you leave? Your wallet. Your oh, wallet. Okay. Well, I had my wallet, but I did not have really? the key. See, so maybe they make you collect all the key you, you and the wallet. You may be right because I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. 
Uh, the only reason I even looked in the microwave is because that's where the blue light came right. from. And, and that, so that's one thing we should touch on right away. Uh, now, again, uh, not playing as many of these as Boat has. This, it is unusual that you can take everything. You can click on everything. Everything has a little descriptor. And you can open almost everything, and inside that, there's more stuff you can take. Drawers have stuff in it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the microwave, I open the microwave, there's a key in there. Uh, I read in a uh, review, or it's actually, what was it? It was a, uh, someone that was just playing the game through. It wasn't a review. And he, and he mentioned that that key is vital at some point. I never gotten, I never got real far to, so I don't know how, I got, I got all put all the way to the, the first guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but so, but uh, 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 and there's a lot of, there's a lot of what Boat said, picking up and then saying, okay, I got to drop something, and then what did I miss? Mm -hmm. well, I'm just exactly like you. I, I didn't have my wallet, N not the key, so you're probably right. It was probably mm -hmm. both you had to have when mm -hmm. you left. Uh, so how long do you figure you spent in that bedroom? Oh, boy. Yeah, I mean, in her, in Eden's apartment right. total, I mean, probably an hour. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. spent like a full night on the first two rooms yeah. trying to figure out what was going on. Yeah. So this game... You know, I'm going to say something controversial. Okay. I, you know, remember when we played Flight of the Amazon Queen? Mm -hmm. uh, I really liked the interface. That was my all-time favorite interface. We have a new champion. This is my now all-time favorite interface. There are no buttons. Everything's done with the mouse. It's all mouse click. Uh, you pick it up. You examine it. You can decide to keep it or not. You can open it. You can use it. Everything comes up. It's seamless. Seamless. Now, it's so seamless that they abuse it in this game. Uh, it has so many collectible items, it's unbelievable. And we've been conditioned, like Boat says, to take everything. Well, you can't have everything. And 30 slots is a lot of slots, but you can fill them real quick. And so it, would, it was annoying to... Well, I mean, I think it added additional false time to the game to not know what you needed to take with you. I know some games do that, but this one did it to the nines, because when you could pick up anything, I mean, magazines, hair clips, garbage, individual pieces of garbage, a mm -hmm. Coke can, a wad of garbage, old cheese dip that was right. in the floor, right? and you're like, what am I going to What am I gonna need this stuff right. for? And, and the difference is that, you know, in some games it's kind of cool, like Oblivion or, you know, one of the the Elder Scrolls games. They program those games so you can pick up everything, too. But you're not required to solve certain puzzles that you have to have certain inventory items from that you may not be able to fit in your inventory. I mean, like, there is a certain set of expectations when you play a point-and-click adventure game that the stuff that you're taking is going to be used later. Right. And uh, and so they're they're setting you up um, in a, in a bad way. I feel from the get go. With this. I will say it's more realistic. I mean, this game has an aura of it takes place in sort of a, uh, a, a let's go with a Blade Runnery. It's future. very. I mean, this guy he watched Blade Runner and he's like, let's make a game. You know baby. what it reminded me of? Uh, and you're gonna may laugh, but it's like. It's like he read some William Gibson novels. Mm -hmm. He watched Blade Runner, and then he was like. How can I combine this with Highlander? That's what it reminded me of. It was all smack, which is a good. This is all good. Yeah. I mean, those are great things to draw from. But I mean, the uh, the uh, uh, the way the game looks, the 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 way the, the guy's attitude, it's very cyberpunky, mm -hmm. you know, which is good. I mm -hmm. mean, I think that added to it. There's an atmosphere this game has. Remember that crazy game we played where you had to fly from Paris and get on the roof of that building and go down and try to shut off the security stuff. Mm -hmm. you, remember what, you remember what that was called? Was I, that, was that, um, was that hangar? No, it wasn't a hangar 18. Uh, it what, was a while back. It was, it was like you, the hostages game, remember, right? No, it was the one where you you have to fly in. You, there's a secretary, the lasers have a corner and every room is, every floor is oh, yeah. a puzzle. Yeah. This had that kind of atmosphere that that right. did. They, it did it's a good job future, of, yeah, yeah, and cyberpunk. Had, yeah, yeah, it, it had a good atmosphere. Now, uh, another thing this game reminded me of, and and you realize this once you get back to your apartment and get in, is is it had a it had some uh, nods or or similarities to Neuromancer. Another good thing, again, your cyberpunk theme. You've got this sort of down on his luck, sort of I mean, uh, uh, kind of uh, futuristic dude. He's a he's a cool dude, uh, and you're accessing terminals in this game. You're accessing this like network. Uh, with these cartridges, and you can and you can uh, uh, you can uh, get news and get the weather and mm -hmm. stuff, and it and it makes the world 
more robust. It's a lot like Neuromancer. Right, that's what I said. It's uh, It has a lot oh, in common. I was thinking about the book and not the... Sorry. Well, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, it, it, which is good. Yeah. I, I, I really like that aspect of the game. Now, here's the aspects I didn't like about it. Degeneration is the game we that's were thinking it. of. Thank you, Necronom. Um, I didn't know that there were clues in that book that you needed to access things on the, like I couldn't find a certain uh, mm -hmm. password. Well, I just looked forever. I, I, I tried to do it in game. Well, apparently there, there were. Oh, I know this. Not apparently. Definitely, there was stuff in the book that you needed to get past these these little code checks. That sucked for me. And I didn't know you could also just hit enter. <laughs> oh, really? It was hacked. Oh, I didn't realize that I didn't either. either. So that was that was a. a that cost me a good solid night of me beating my head against the wall. <laughs> I mean, I went everywhere and picked up everything and read everything. That's when I realized how enormous the effort was to to uh, to label all just the amount of work it would take just to get all these individual things together. Uh, another aspect that you, I, I you can tell me that you've ever seen this before is that I guess they realized that hey, this is an overhead view. Sometimes it's hard to see these little items in the corner of the screen. There's a magnifying glass, mm -hmm. effectively. And it follows your mouse cursor around. It's got a little crosshair on it. And you it helps you see, it's supposed to help you see what you're picking up, it's, right? It's supposed to. What did you think about that, Boat? Have you ever seen that anywhere? I've never, well, uh, no, I've never seen that because most game designers are smart enough not to design a game that requires a zoom window. Sounds like you're being a little negative here. I'm being a little negative. Go ahead, keep, keep going. So this game defines the you know what everybody hates about what adventure games became in the mid '90s, which is they're basically pixel hunts where you're dragging your mouse slowly across the screen until you see that little flicker where the text change, and then you're dragging it back and trying to line it up just right so you can pick up that one pixel size object to add to your inventory. Um, this is not the perspective, well, first of all, that's dumb in any perspective, but in a game especially like this where all the objects are super small anyway because the game is played on probably about a quarter of the screen real estate. <laughs> I was waiting for this to come up. A yeah. full half of the screen real estate is taken up uh, BC Kid Moon style by your uh, startling visage. I, I go back to that Dreamcatcher article. We've referenced it many times yeah. where he talked about how these games where they used up half the screen for stupidity. And right. This is one of them. Yeah. So, you know, that's dumb. Um, the zoom window, they put it in. I'm glad they put it in because it. I guess it does, it does help you see objects better. It doesn't help you move the mouse into the area where you need to pick it up any better, though. Um, this game... Uh, there's a lot going for this game. I'll talk about the positives first. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, the music. I really like the music. You want to talk about music that fits the theme, that creates an environment. This music, I thought, fit this game perfectly. It seemed almost like it was digitized with a long stretch of digitization with like a loop. I mean, it was really good. I, I did find out that they actually released a soundtrack for this on an album. Oh, really? You can. I mean, it's apparently it's mega rare. Mm. But uh, yeah, the music was. I mean, it was very fitting. Mm -hmm. It was very fitting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought that the graphics were actually, you know, very well done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, it's a, it's the top down perspective, and uh, you know, things were artfully rendered. Um, you know, as far as pixel art goes, is pretty much the best the best it can be. Um, I liked the variety of you know uh, places that you went to. There were some things that looked a little bit samey, but like when you go into various apartments or you go to the bar or whatever, they were decorated with different decorations. It wasn't like they made a tile set and they were just you know putting things down. But they did do the classic <coughs> uh, dystopian future browns and grays, right? And and everything's dark. Yeah, and again, but I mean it makes sense. It comes but yeah, with it the looks theme. good. I agree yeah. with you. And there is you know there's there's a good amount of neon and things in there. Oh yeah, too, you gotta have cool. that. Uh, this game is. Uh, Probably maybe most notable for its depiction of graphic sex on screen. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I didn't know. I hadn't read that until I saw it. I I've like, never seen this in a video game. Boy, I don't know if I've ever seen it this graphic in any video game. I'm sure in these it's days, quick. It's sure these days anything goes. But I mean, like you see, it's brief news. You see, it's going on, and then you see she gets off, she gets off and under the bed, and then you see full frontal baby. The guy lay in there. Now, of course, very pixelized. It's just a bunch of pixels on the screen, but I mean, it's not blurred out at all. And to me, like that was 
it was, I mean, I wasn't offended by it because, it, I mean, it's just, it's just, that's what it is. But I was surprised that that sort of thing was allowed to be put on the show. In some parts of the world, that was censored. Mm -hmm. at, uh, at, in some parts of the world, that was censored. That was a, uh, apparently, this was controversial at the time. Now, I, I only killed, I got to that point and mm -hmm. then finished that part, and that's as far as I got. I saved off and then get to play it again. Uh, this game is custom made for you not to like because it's got things you don't like in it. One thing it's also got is uh, extreme idiot insanity, mega levels of super violence. Oh, yeah. So you when you shoot a guy, you don't just shoot him and there's like a little blood for you. His entire body just turns inside out. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's a bit where you kill this guard. Did you get to that part? I saw where it on you, the playthrough. Yeah, you, with the axe, and, and you then. basically cleave him in twain. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just a. I mean, he's basically. It looks like he on this poor guy. Yeah, he's a big O. No, I mean, and, you, and he'll shoot you before you. You have to get him first. Before right in. It's, it, and I mean, this this is the sort of thing that fits this style of game. Yeah, man. you know, everything in the future is more over the top than it is now, and so in the cyberpunk future, it's crazy violence. Yeah. Um, and so I, you know, I wasn't, you know, I didn't feel like it was out of place. If it wasn't quite so pixelated, I probably wouldn't have liked it. I mean, I can handle some, you know, red pixelated gore but it, it was cartoony by necessity right? right i mean i'm sure if this guy could have done it he would have made it much more absolutely graphic. absolutely um i am not as crazy about the interface as you are okay i thought you know when you pick something up okay and yeah. you want to look at it you should be able to click on the thing in your inventory and look at it you shouldn't have to click on it it comes up and then you have to click on examine well you but you also you can that's how you use as well so it, 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 it that when you serve two purposes you should, if there's something that they want you to see, when you click on it out of your inventory, it should show you the thing that you want to see. You shouldn't have to click on it. Obviously, if you're clicking on it in your inventory, like for example, your wallet. Okay, I'm going to look in my wallet. This is... All right. Oh, wait, I need to open my wallet. Right. Somebody tell the game I need to open my wallet. No, when you when you get your wallet out of your pocket, you freaking open it up. It should be there like that. If there's something inside of it, then take it out. Visual aids. Yeah. Listen, I didn't say it was perfect. I'll give you that. There's a lot of wasted clicks. I, oh, there's a lot of wasted I clicks. Think, I, I think it's a, a very smooth interface, personally. Uh, now, I'll, I'll grant you that. I, I'm not I think it's just because you haven't played a lot of, of point-and-click adventure games. Because there were games from this vintage like LucasArts games. And I, I don't understand what is different about... Actually, let's go back to you said that it wasn't as good as Amazon Queen. No, what I said was, it was, I liked it better than Amazon right, Queen. Right, right. That, that's what I meant. So what did you like... What did Amazon Queen do that this was different no than this? This had no buttons. I mean, you literally just clicked the stuff. What are you, there, what are you talking about it, buttons? You, you clicked it up. You know, like exam and go. Or the what, stuff. Yeah, they were all up at the top. When no, you clicked no, on the no, thing, no, they were you, all up at the they're top. They're not there until you click on something. It's very, I thought it was very seamless. I like that. Okay. I also like the fact that you've got a, I mean, you do have a robust inventory for all the stuff you pick up. I actually like the way you interacted with your inventory. I thought it worked out good. You could just click on your, the one thing about having that massive picture of yourself, you just click on it, opens up your inventory. I thought it was, it was simple. It was, and for me, I'm, again, I'm a neophyte at this stuff. You're more it's advanced. It wasn't so the it worst. So it made more sense that you would not be more picky about yeah. it than me. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not going to say you're wrong and I'm right, but for me, I liked it. Now, okay. uh, admittedly, your gripe is, and I, I got tired of opening doors. I got tired of opening stuff. I understand you're right there. Uh, and, and they don't do everything perfectly. But I think there's a lot of stuff in this that I did like. Uh, movement is the old, you know, put the mouse where you want to go, and he walks over there. Yeah, at least there's no walk to command. Right. You know? But uh, when you travel uh, off, basically, when you travel off the scenario, you're basically uh, can pick where you want to go. Yeah. Now, you would think that would, it does make it quicker. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go over a million different spots you've right. been. It's still not quick. I'll give you an example. If you're going, there's a bit towards the beginning where you're, uh, where Ryan goes to the bar, right, where he works. Well, he's fired. All right, you'll figure that out. So uh, I need to go back to my apartment, right? Well, you click, you got to click all the way out of the bar. You got to click down the street. You've got to click to that screen where you travel. If it was just that, you'd be okay. Then you've got to click back up the stairs you've got to click into the elevator you've got to click that you've got to enter the code to get mm -hmm. up in your you know it's almost like they should have just made all these locations next to each other on the main map and taken out the fast travel screen all together we may have mentioned this in the past but i, I, I maybe we're spoiled i don't know i it, it'd be nice if we could just be like bam i want to go i want to be at the house and you're there and you don't have to go through all because basically you're just wasting time right nothing's going to happen between when you leave the bar and when you're standing at the terminal you want to go to mm-hmm 
but I mean, in the old days, I guess this was uh, you just did it because that's part of the ambiance or whatever. But now I'm. I've got no time, and mm -hmm. I want everything now. I'm a spoiled yeah. future man. Well, there's a reason why fast travel is in every game these days. You know, yeah, so, so that uh, that did get tedious, and and uh, 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 again, stuff not having like I kept trying to get past the end of stuff with my terminal, and I didn't have access to because they had they had they had mixed in the storyline stuff in the in the manual with the copy protection, right? And so, and I didn't know that. You know, and I didn't get to read. I didn't know there was a a, a book to read because I played the game. I like to play the games before I actually do a lot of research, so it doesn't kind of slant my opinion of the game. Yeah. I, See, I don't. I read everything. Not before me. I play and it. so I didn't know about the book. I had no I had no idea that there, it came with a book, mm -hmm. and I had no idea there was copy protection in the book. Now, when I loaded my copy up, there was a copy protection screen that came up, and I didn't know what it did. You know, you see those all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was kind of a bummer, and I lost a lot of time. I literally, uh, I also, something else you don't have, I didn't have these until I looked them up, is the terminal comes up, and the terminal is not super vital at this at the early stages, as far as I could tell, but it's still, you need it, and you don't know the commands. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, what are they? So I literally had to sit there like a goof and just try to guess. It's right. not, it ain't DOS And either. it turns out that it's like list is the main list, thing. Yeah, yeah and, and, and read, I think is the other one. But you still don't know them, and and when you type help, it says consult the manual. Right. Well, pfft. you know that's not gonna help. Yeah, have the freaking man. So, it also it also takes you out of the game experience. Well, I'm just too. no. I mean, it can, <laughs> no, it says it in a cool guy way. But oh, I mean, okay. can't they just show you what? Right. I mean, it doesn't take much to just list some commands. Yeah. You've got I know I've, you've got a description of this piece of garbage. You need the BBC Micro style instructions right. on, in the game itself. Uh, I agree with what you said about the the profile picture. If you got now, it is. It amused me when I put the sunglasses on and the guy put them yeah. on. But I mean, it is utterly a waste of real estate. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if you if you would take that out, and, I mean, if you, if you if you moved it around and that's where like button interface was, which this doesn't have, you probably aren't losing that much as like a lot of games lose interface mm -hmm. space for the interface. But still, the whole point of having this nice interface is that you don't need to have buttons out there. Right. Why waste it with this? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he had his reasons. You know, I don't know what they are, and, but I mean. It's also weird just to go around and just see that guy. I mean, it's just, <laughs> just wherever you go, it, there it, he it, is. Now, honestly, it, it de cools the game for me. <laughs> well, especially like we remember the scene where he gets mugged. So he's getting mugged, he's laid out on the street. Meanwhile, you just see him. He's still, you know, unfazed. I, I thought that was standing awesome. erect. <laughs> no shoes. Yeah. That's the all the things to take it. Take your shoes. You uh, can tell this is a product of the nineties when. And I also like his buddy, were... the guy on the on the, on the can, yep. basically. And yeah, I just took his shoes. Oh I, yeah, that's what you what do. You, you got to do that to yeah. move on. Oh uh, well, I didn't know that. I just yeah, he ain't using them. <laughs> yeah, I just took them. Uh, but uh, uh, I watched. I didn't want to watch all this and play through because I'm. Uh, this is a game I could get into, and so I, but I watched a little bit just to. Kind of get oh, in. so you don't know what happens at the end? I don't. Okay, I, I don't. won't spoil it. I won't spoil uh, and, and because I didn't want to know. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, it's it's another one of those games uh, that I, I want to go back to it, and when I have more time to play it, because I mean, this is my kind of game. Mm -hmm. I like these kind of cyberpunk games. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard a lot of speculation, and when I was researching this, that the the mission this guy's got to kill these seven evil guys is like basically he's just nuts, and he's just killing people like a psychopath, right? And he even uh, occasionally in dialogue will act, you know, say weird stuff or they do, you know, act mm -hmm. like he's having some inner strife or mm -hmm. whatever. So I don't know. I didn't get far enough to make a determination on that. Did you? Did you get far? Oh, enough? I know. I know. I watched the full playthrough. So oh, I know you watched how it the ends. whole thing. Yeah. Well, then don't don't tell me that. Um, so I'm guessing, Boat, from your demeanor here, that you were not a fan. No, I don't, I'm not saying that. Uh, I thought this game was actually pretty good, and it's one of the more unique games that we've played on the Amiga. There's nothing else quite like it, and that's that's saying a lot because it's hard to uh, to come up with an entirely new. You know, of course, point and click adventure games are not new, but having them in this sort of uh, top down perspective where so many things are animated in a lot of point and click adventure games, everything is uh, you know there's there's a lot of still shots. Yeah, and everything in this is like a living, breathing world um i i'm a big fan of the environment and the way that the, the music integrates with the environment in any game and this game does a great job with that yeah um it's always raining i just I yeah. like that too i just don't have the patience to 
to run around and collect 17 mugs to realize that I don't like it. That angered me to the point where I, I didn't want to play much past Why did you that. keep doing it? I mean, why? You, you surely by the 15th mug, you're well, like, Well, oh. yeah, I mean, I, I exaggerate. But I mean, the like, Coke cans you know, the garbage? When, when, I, when I finally got out of there and I, I went to the bar and I talked to the guy and I, I was doing all this stuff. And then at some point, I'm just like, well, I could either do this and make mistakes along the way and waste a bunch of time, or I can watch someone else do this where they make no mistakes and I can I can watch the story. Because when you play this game, you're really playing it. This game is not a real mind bender in terms of like the puzzles that you've got to solve. Mm -hmm. um, you're mainly playing it to, to for one to see the horrific, you know, uh, either pornographic or violent elements that are going down. Two. You want to see what happens to this guy and how he advances, you know, in the story. And so you can do both of those things by going to YouTube.com and watching, you know, a playthrough. I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything by not playing this game. You know, a game this reminded me of was the one me and Brent did, like Dark Seed, the uh, Giger mm -hmm. game. Here's another guy who's haunted by a, a inner strife, and he's doing all this weird. He's driven to do all this weird stuff. He thinks he's going mad. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's there's a certain commonality. I think that was probably this is, pro I really actually I liked it too. This is these games are similar in a lot of levels. I mean, the unique interface and an interesting look. I prefer, uh, you know, I just don't like the first person adventure game genre, like the Elvira, the uh, the Giger thing. For whatever reason, I just have never been a fan of those. I much prefer to see my character moving around in the space. I think you could see the guy in Dark Seed, I believe. I think you could actually see him. I thought it was like Shadowgate or Elvira, where no, it was think, all... Unless I'm insane, I think you could okay. actually see your guy uh, Maybe I'm wrong around. about that. Um, but I mean, it had his... Do it, 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 they were similar. They were similar. I think the guy that, that put this together really had a... I mean, I, the plot's interesting. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I like the fact that there's some question as to whether you're absolutely out of your... Uh, uh, insane, you know, mm -hmm. like that's cool. Um, I think there were some missteps. I actually looked at the PC version of this too. The PC version is pretty much the same, better res, but it's got voice acting in it. So all the dialogue is red, oh. you know. That's not necessarily a good thing. Right, especially but it, at it this wasn't, time. I thought it was okay. Some people really pan the voice acting, but I thought it, I thought it sort of added to the atmosphere. Uh, the uh, I will say this game has been released as freeware by the author, so you can go download it for for free. You can go get it for nothing. So if you feel like, and it, it also runs the PC version runs on the Scum engine, so you can go play the PC version oh, cool. if you want to. I, I, the, of course, the Amiga version you can run any number of ways, uh, but it's I mean it's it's been released for free, which is cool. Uh, the the, uh, the guys that put it together didn't really do much else. I don't think they did anything as far as I, I don't have anything for them on the Amiga. Aside from this game, which is odd. Uh, something else that's interesting is the way this game was reviewed. Uh, <laughs> I've never read a more uh, venomous review of this game. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. The Amiga Power Review. Yeah. A fellow named Jonathan Nash wrote this. Did you read I that? I read it. I couldn't... Because it was so low. Yeah. That, I mean, even if you hate this game, I was like, man, how is this this low? This guy absolutely just crapped on this you game in, in a tell. very creative way. I think that it was adventure game fatigue was was, yeah. was a big part of that because he'd done so many of these same things over and over again. Yeah. I don't think that he was really... I don't think he paid enough mind to the, the uniqueness of the... the uh, the story and the environment. Well, I, mean, I think he was just like, man, it's another one of these, except it's not he, quite as he, good. It was a, a venomous <coughs> article. I mean, yeah. again, I don't know if this guy's got a rep for doing that stuff, but man, it was it was nasty. Uh, so, uh, uh, re review wise, weight rating rise, uh, the uh, the lemon folks give this a uh, hefty marks. Uh, OCS version they give an eight point four two, and the AGA version an eight point three six. One of the few times the AGA version gets a lower mark, mm -hmm. which is weird. Uh, I don't think this ever got a release like the CD32, which makes me wonder uh, if they just didn't bother. Because again, you've got if you've got all that voice acting that when the PC version. Well, I think the, the CD32 they wanted to make games that were mostly controller based, and this is a mouse driven title. Well, you're you're right, but you could, I mean that didn't stop them from doing other games on there. You could have used the joystick with this; it just would have been more annoying. Um, so, uh, just a few reviews. Amiga Action gave it a this Listen to the width of this of uh, the differences in these. Amiga Action gave us a ninety-two. Amiga Dream, I like that is. one. Ninety percent. That's the, Dusty's other son. The Joker, right? They hate everything, right? Eighty-three. They dug it. The One gave it an eighty-five. So those are the good scores, right? 
Now let's look at some of these other scores. Of course, we mentioned Amiga Power, 24%. Brutal. Yeah. Adventure Gamers, which is a magazine, 1.5 out of 5 stars. Oh, my gosh. That's got to be a more recent thing. Yeah. Another magazine that did not like this at all was Drag, and they also drug it through the mud. So, I mean, this They're was... They're more fantasy, folks. This was they a polarized... Like yeah, but they used to have... They used to do a lot of, uh, of, of uh, you know, adventure games. I mean... Again, killing this one. I think they gave it a one star or something like that. It was brutal. So this game is... I don't think we've ever seen a game that got a 92 and a 24. And we've seen a bunch of... And, and, and not have Amiga Joker involved in some right. capacity. So this thing got m murderized by the, by the, some of the press. Which, again, I think giving this a 24 is ludicrous. I can I can understand not liking the interface, but it's not your bag. I can understand not being happy with the violence and the sex. I can understand that, too. I can understand not liking the big profile of the guy, but I mean, there, there's no universe where this is a 24. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's a that, like agree. you said. Maybe you're right. It was a it was just some kind of weird uh, fatigue or whatnot. Uh, on eBay, there are none of these. There are mm. none available. The last one I could find was sold in the UK in July, and it sold for 52 US dollars. Mm. So it went for a goodly amount of cash. Uh, but uh, this is definitely one I'm going to go back to. Uh, uh, I thought it was real. I thought the story was interesting. I want to, what I'd like to do is actually go back and read fully read the the book that comes with it. I like the idea that they it came with a book. That was a common thing back in the day. I know, day. but I know I miss that. Yeah, you know, yeah. I miss it, really a lot uh, of having the missed, box yeah. in my hand. You know, but it is what it is. But uh, another, uh, I salute the guys over at the uh, Game Selection Committee. This is another one I would have never even me too known about this one me if too. they hadn't picked it. And also something else I've learned is if you emulate this. And you get sick of looking at the guy. You could just drag the the window over to where he's gone. <laughs> which I did. It's like look at this door. He's That's gone. awesome. Or just put your own face over to another window like that. <laughs> um, before we wrap up the show, I'd just like to remind everybody that uh, you can, if you enjoy the show, leave us an iTunes review that really helps us get discovered. Um, you can support us on Patreon, uh, throw us a couple bucks a month and get access to our Discord server. You can be part of the Amigos Game Selection Pay Committee. Pay me to watch movies at your leisure. <laughs> pick um, them out. There's also the Amigos World of Supporters t-shirt that can feature your name on it uh, should you decide to support the show. Um, Aaron, last week the Patreon uh, supporter song challenge. Do you remember the tune? No. Do you remember the tune? Oh, man. I should do that for the song challenge. We no. need more MJ. You were singing just now? I thought you were passing a stone. <laughs> In the stone? I can do that one, too. Oh, man. Just um, keep talking. Pixels at Dawn was a winner. I know he's, him. A, he's a frequent winner of the uh, contest. Chicken dinner. And uh, Kim Tommy Humberstad. Which I wish we'd hear from more often because I love saying his name. Oh, yeah. He says, uh, This is according to my daughter who ran to the TV and wanted to see Pokemon again upon hearing the podcast in the background. Thanks, John. I was trying to get her interested in some old CD32 game at the time. Failed again. <laughs> So, of course, last week's song was the Pokemon theme. Is that what that was? That's what that was. Holy moly. I listened to, I listened to the show. I listened to it back to try to understand what that was. And, man, <laughs> you think I would know that one, too, because my kid loves Pokemon. But, no, I didn't get it. This week, if you know the answer to the Amigos Supporters Patreon song challenge, you can send me an email at john at amigospodcast.com. And uh, if you uh, are the winner then i will say something fun and interesting about you or maybe i'll ask aaron to <laughs> uh, i'll make up some crap yeah uh it'll be real fun we'll do that on next week's episode so Ooh. this week's song and actually aaron this just in it just came in while we were recording the episode we have a new patreon this is a new uh, amigos uh, game selection committee member that's just joined us robert edgerton Robert Edgerton. What are, you, what, so, is, what, are, what are you looking at here? Is this the, the Amigos Hotline Watch? This is the Amigos Hotline Watch. I put this are watch you, show, on. Show the people this. This is right before we record every week. I, I only wear this watch for the show. And whenever we get Amigos-related <laughs> messages, they come right to my wrist. I thought, you were, I thought you were having some sort of mental thing going on. You're, I'll see him looking down. Good so, Lord. Well, um, I say thanks. Welcome aboard. Yeah, so welcome, Robert Edgerton, as well as Simon Rose and Joseph Harrison, who just signed on this past week. Welcome yes. to the club. All right, and speaking of Joseph, he just showed up here in the uh, in the chat. I expect um, to see you, man. So soon. Here we go. Chatting away. 
Simon Rose, Joseph Harrison, Kyle Etter, Rob O'Hara, Howard Nibs, Matthew Lara, Moore, Andy Craig, Sean Zo, Darren Lomax, Colin 419, Bark, Bit Roland, Burke, Andrew Monks, Joe the Zombie, John Cook, Dan Ross, Leaf Kellon, Alan Kebab, Check out the level Lord, John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRosha, Creep, be dead boy, biggest UTZ. The slow nor Stefan Sigor and Martinson. Edvin Helen, Blind of 75. Christopher Hassel, Ravi Abba, Chris Foltz. Dreamcatcher Lauren Jerome, Graham Vebke, Brent Dowdy, Lane Dins and Adam Batters, Rio Ryans, Retro and Vintage, Gary Hucker, C. Brian Jones, Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles, Alan Kebab, Anthony Jarvis. Taze from the Crypt, Josh Nan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, THG, Eric Nelson. Kim, Tommy, Hoom, Richard, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warns, Pixels of Dawn, and Yol Bjorn Barm. You got to start doing like longer songs. I just do two or three verses now. You could do like uh, what's you could do like Anna to Vita or something. I could. You know what I'm saying? Or or Radar Love. Mm -hmm. Paradise white, by the Dashboard the white Light. White Lion version. Oh yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, I need your help for that one. I'll I'll be the girl. That's what I figured. Um. <laughs> So <laughs> Wow, Roy walked into that, didn't I? <laughs> uh, I'd also like to thank everybody hanging out with us in the party town, otherwise known as the YouTube chat. We got Joseph H, Level Lord, AO5K, Barkbit, Pixels of Dawn, Marco Brunello, Henrik Anderson, Edvin Helland, um, Necronom was here, Simon Rose, Pixels at Dawn, Yolander de Vries. Oh, I like that. Uh, yeah, so we got, it's Per Sangren Man, is a, here. There's a billion yeah, people. Yeah, we got a lot we of did, folks. That's not even close to all of them. You it's can crazy. always join us live when we record this. We always record Fridays at 5.30, except when we don't. Um, and uh, or if you I'm know, called away on it, police business. It's always it's always a fun time. There's always a, a good chat going on down in the old chat room, and <laughs> how you like that? I'm down, selling it, baby. Down uh, in the old well, Shucky Dog. <laughs> so, um, God. Aaron, next week we're gonna play a game I've never heard of before. Well, that seems to be, that seems to be the order of the day. <laughs> What's next? It's called Overkill. Have you heard of this one? No. Okay. No, I think I've heard of it. I don't think I've played it. Okay. I, I think I have heard of well, it. We're Overkill. We're going to play it. It was chosen by the Amigos Game Selection Committee. So uh, it's going to be... I, I don't know if it'll be good or not, to be honest with you, but we will play it. And That's the way I describe back. my personality. Just overkill. Too much of me. Too much. Yeah. There's never too much of you, Oh, man. man. <laughs> Want to bet? <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Until next time. Adios. adios.